Today, guys, I'm going to be showing you how to make Roblox thumbnails in 2023. So my old video no longer works because Moon Animator is not free. If you guys still do have Moon Animator, though, the video works perfectly fine. This video just has a few more steps because we can't use Moon Animator. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do to make our thumbnail is we need to open up Roblox Studio. If you guys don't have Roblox Studio installed, you guys need to make sure you get installed. There will be a link on my website if you don't already. All right, so what we're going to do is open it up real quick, Roblox Studio. So so from here what we're gonna do is we can just go into a base uh, a classic base plate and here is our Roblox studio now all right so the next thing that we're gonna need to do is go over to our toolbox so if you guys don't actually see your toolbox right here you guys can click on toolbox now we're gonna click on models and we're gonna go to plugin now from there we're going to just install the load character plugin not this one right here for 100 robux this one down here for free so then click install now I already have it installed so I'm just gonna go open it up all right so I'm gonna go to plugins and then I'm gonna click on load character and and then I'm going to type in my username. All right, here is my avatar. And now we're going to select spawn at origin and then spawn R6. Make sure you do spawn R6 or this is not going to work with the rig I have set up. There we go. Now we have our character at spawn. Now we're not going to do any positioning in Roblox Studio because of course we don't have Moon Animator. So what we're going to do first is we are going to export his textures. So what we're going to do is click on him or uh, right click on him and then click on export selection. And then we're going to just save him to our downloads. Now what we need to do is actually save our models so like his head his back back accessories and his front accessories so we're going to click on our model and then we're going to click on boombox we can click control so we can do multi-select so do boombox and then hit control while you click on the other accessories so now we have the top hat selected the back accessory selected and the front accessory selected so then what we are going to do is click on this or right click on this and then we're going to click on export selection and then we're going to do the same thing and put it in our downloads all right so the next thing that you guys are going to need to do is actually go to my website what you guys will need to do is go to my rig download right here click on this and it will take you to a google drive file link you guys can download either one or you can just download the entire folder i usually use faceless.blend so that's what we're actually using for this tutorial all right so real quick i'm just going to open up the rig then I'm going to click on type A, faceless, and open up our faceless rig. Now we're in Blender and we have our rig. So we need to apply the textures to our rig first. So we are going to click on his arm right here. Then we are going to go up to the uh, right-hand corner, not the top right-hand corner, just like this right-hand corner right here. And we are going to drag it down. And as you guys can see, there are now two of these windows. From the top window, what you guys want to do is click on this little button in the corner, editor type. And then we're going to click on shader editor. This will take us into um, our shader editor now to move around in this you're going to need to click down your middle mouse button and you can move it uh, move around so now we're going to zoom in and we are going to just kind of get to this texture file right here what we're going to do is click on the file button click on downloads and then we are going to select handle one underscore diff dot png and now you guys can see we have our texture you guys can just drag this back up like that because we are no longer going to need it the next thing that we need to do is actually import his accessory so our new import wavefront dot obj and then we're going to click on download and we're going to get his accessory so what we're going to do is actually move this up so it fits on him it's probably going to be backwards at first so what you need to do is click on r on your keyboard so it's it goes like this and then you need to click on z so you can just rotate them around like this and there we go now we have our model in blender so now it's the time for the positioning so what we're going to need to do is click on these little parts these little outlines around his arm and now we can click on rotate kind of rotate them um and this uh this rig has a lot more bendability features i guess you could say than the old video so that's kind of nice uh and it kind of just looks more realistic uh if roblox can even look realistic i mean it the can so you also can bend his wrists different stuff like that which is kind of nice now we're gonna just bend his legs a little bit all right uh I'm, his legs look really jank but it's all right uh now we have our character positioned how we want him so what we are going to do is click on file export and then wavefront.obj then click on downloads and then again export him to your downloads now the next thing that we're gonna need to do is actually open up a Lightroom file that is also linked on my website. This Lightroom file is how we are going to render our image for our thumbnail. All right, here we are in the Lightroom. So there's a few basic things I need to explain here. As you guys can see, if you want to move around like this, you can just use this selector tool up in the corner. We are going to be going into our camera perspective in a few minutes so we can move around. Last uh, time I made a video on this, it was kind of confusing to some people, but this button right here puts you in camera mode or you can toggle on the number pad zero. So if I click here, it takes me into the camera. Now I'm in the camera everything inside of this frame is going to be what 
is going to be rendered in your final image. So we can go out of it and we can go back into it. So what we need to do now is actually click file, import, wavefront.obj, and then import our model that we just exported. So it's just called faceless.obj. We're just going to import that. And as you guys can see, we have our model. Now, there's no colors or anything on him right now. And if I click on the rendered option, it just renders his uh, accessories colors. So to get him colored up, what we need to do is click off this first because this is lagging my computer out. I cannot really do that. Okay, there we go. So what we need to do is actually click on the arm, then make sure we are down here in this selector on this texture file. And there's a simple fix for this. All you guys need to actually do is click on this right here and change it to handle one MTL, whatever this is right here. This is why it wasn't working. And there we go. Now we have our texture. Now don't worry. It is translucent, transparent, uh, kind of messed up. It's just messed up. It looks weird. It won't look weird in the wet render, I promise. So we're just gonna apply this texture to all of our body parts. Uh, you can't actually multi-select them and just do them all at once, which is kind of frustrating, but you know, it is what it is. All right, now we have our Roblox character in here, but we have all of these different parts down here that we no longer need. So what we need to do is click on shift and then tilde, which is the uh, key at the top next to the one, uh, at least on my keyboard. And then we can kind of just move around in a flying mode. So what we need to do is click on these and delete them. You can also just, you know, click the delete button. And now we just have our character. Let me delete this. Bam, we have our character now. So now we need to go into camera mode. And as you guys can see, he has flipped around the wrong way. So what we need to do is actually turn him around. So I'm going to click on his accessories and then go all the way to the bottom and then click on control shift and that will copy everything. Now, we accidentally selected the camera while doing this and we don't really want that. So we need to go to the very top and deselect the camera by hitting control and then clicking that and it should be deselect. Then you guys can click on R and then you guys can click on Z and we can rotate him around so he's facing the camera. And there we go. Now he is facing our camera. So what I'm going to do is click on shift tilde while I'm in the camera mode. And now I can fly around and position the camera how I want it to look. So I'm going to just make him look like this. Uh, I think that's fine. And now when I click on the render, as you guys can see, we have our character being rendered. And it looks pretty nice. I cannot lie. Now he does not have a face uh, for some reason. I think I forgot to put the face model on. But we can still fix this in Photopea. So that's fine. All right, so what we're going to do now to get our image, once you've uh, placed the camera how you like it, you guys can click on render, render image, and as you guys can see, it's going to render our image. It may be super, super laggy because I'm recording and rendering at the same time, which is not the greatest idea. So yeah, once it's finished rendering, that's when we can start making our actual thumbnail. Now, while this is still rendering, I've actually decided that I'm going to be making a simulator thumbnail for this video. So what I'm going to do is actually need to open up Roblox again. I'm going to get some pets out of the toolbox to render. All right, so our render finally finished. What we need to do is click on image, save as, and then again, save it to our downloads. All right, now that's that saved, I need to actually get some other pets for my thumbnail because I'm doing like a simulator thumbnail just to show you guys. So I'm going to need to get some pets. I'm going to go into Roblox Studio. And I'm just going to look up Pet Simulator X pets because those are popular, I guess, you know, why not? Because, you know, dogs are pretty fire. All right, so now what we're going to do is click on him, click on, uh, make sure his position is at zero, zero, zero. And there we go. Now we're going to click on export selection and then again, save them to our downloads. Now what we need to do is click file, import, wavefront.obj and now we need to import our uh, ddd.obj file. Now we can actually just move him up here, click on rotate and rotate him so he's facing us, render and then render the image. All right, now while that's rendering, you guys need to go to the website link in the description and click on photopia.com. All right, now that our dog is finished being rendered, we're going to click image, save as and just save him again. Now that we have all the images or most of the images that we need, we need to click on new project, go on 1280 by 70 120 put that in the width and the height and then click on create all right so the next thing that we need to do is drag in our model we go up here or we need to drag in our images so i'm going to drag in untitled or yeah untitled in here uh here is our mo uh our roblox guy which looks pretty cool then we're going to drag in our here's our dog now this may look kind of weird because this dog is actually face on and it doesn't look really like super realistic but we're just going for a test thumbnail here so the next thing we need to do is actually add some outlines to our character so what I'm going to do is click on our character over here in the layers tab, right click, and then click blending option. Now you guys will probably have to fiddle around with these settings, but I'm going to turn on bevel, bevel, and emboss. And then I'm going to turn on the stroke, and then I'm going to turn on the drop shadow. Now my stroke is at three, my bevel, my bevel, sorry, I keep saying it wrong, and emboss. These are my bevel and emboss settings. You guys can copy these if you want them. Um, and then we have my drop shadow right here, and you guys can copy those as well if you want them. And those are my settings for my outline 
outline of my character. So this kind of looks more simulator-ish. Then we can apply those same settings to this dog. Now the dog looks kind of weird because I, again, I didn't really get it positioned right, but we can still work with it. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is actually focus on our text. So you guys wanna click on the text feature down here and then drag it like this. And we need to select the luckiest guy font. You guys can choose what font you use actually, but I like to use luckiest guy because you know, it's cool. Now we're going to type in whatever your thumbnail is gonna say. I'm gonna say Jane. I'm gonna make that one word and then I'm gonna do pets somewhere else on this. So now we need to focus on how we are going to make this text look better because right now it kind of looks stupid. So we're gonna click here. We're gonna click on blending options. Then we need to click on, uh, we don't have to do bevel emboss for this one. We, I usually just do stroke and drop shadow. And then we need to go to gradient overlay. And as you guys see, this kind of changes it up a bit. We need to go to gradient overlay and now can select our color. So I just clicked on this uh, gradient option right here. So then we need to click on this first box here. Click on this box down here. And now we can change up the colors. I kind of want it to be like red because you know, red's a cool color. All right. And then I'm going to move this over slightly. Now I'm going to move this red kind of just customize this a bit kind of, I want it kind of light red, uh, but not, you know, super light red. Now this stroke is kind of like not thick. So I'm going to go to stroke, make this like five and there we go. That makes it thick enough to where it like actually looks somewhat decent. So this is just the very basic part of our thumb that we're going to be going a little bit more. We're going to do a lot more to change this up. So we just have the word insane right now. And now we're going to copy and paste it and we're going to change this. Now this is kind of a very badly organized thumbnail. I'm not going to lie to you right now. You know, you'll get the hang of it. So I'm going to just scale him down even more. There we go. Now, usually I make these two different colors, my uh, two words. I try to only put two words on screen. You know, that's so people don't have to read a ton and I can make it bigger, but I'm going to go here. I want to just make this green. So now all you have to do is drag this down to green. There we go. Now it looks, that looks pretty decent. Now we're going to focus on, since I didn't put a face on my character or it didn't render my face or I chose faceless something, I'm going to look up cartoony and then we're going to just look up happy face, I guess, or cartoon happy face. Once I got this, I'm going to just scroll down until I find one. Just find one that looks uh, decent and then we're going to copy it. And now we are going to go to remove.bg. This is going to just take a take away the background so click on remove.bg click on uh you can just actually paste your image you can just click Control v and there we go now we have our face so i'm gonna click on copy image i'm gonna go here i'm gonna click paste and now i'm going to drag him over here now if for some reason this is behind your character you just need to drag it like over over that layer so that it's like facing over if that makes any sense to you guys now we're just gonna scale this guy down and put his face now that that looks all right it's not the best uh you know it is what it is but as you guys can see the text is a lot bigger than my actual character so i'm going to scale him up a bit just to add more depth and I'm just going to try to center him a bit better. Uh, this looks kind of kind of weird. I'm not going to lie to you. This thumbnail looks really weird, but there we go. Insane pets. Now this pet's just going to stay down here because I don't really have a better place to put him. Now we need to get a background. So usually what I'll do is I'll just join a Roblox game. It could be like Pet Simulator X, something like that. That has kind of like a simulator style or like bright, vibrant greens. That's what I like to put in my backgrounds. So I'm going to join this and take a screenshot inside of it. All right, now that I'm in the game, this isn't like a super bright green area, but I'm still going to take a screenshot of like the mountain over here. I try to make sure that I'm not actually in the screenshot. So click con uh, uh, on Windows at least it's Windows shift s then we can just click here screenshot that boy then we can go down here and paste it uh, if it's you're gonna make want to make sure it's your background so you're gonna want to make sure it's moved behind everything except for the initial background scale this up now at first it looks kind of blurry and bad pixely grainy whatever you want to call it so what we're gonna do is click on filter blur and then click on motion blur and we're gonna make the motion blur on this like a hundred percent it's probably going to lag your computer out the second you do it but once it's finished just click on ok and there we go now we have this and our background and it looks pretty good now again the pets look stupid because I didn't do this right this is just a very basic kind of thrown together thumbnail. And this is how you guys would make your own thumbnails. Also, just real quick, if for some reason you can't move your character around, make sure you have transform controls selected and then you can be able to, you know, move your character. The last thing for making thumbnails, click it on file, export as PNG. And then from there, you guys will just want to click save and then it will ask you where you want to save your file. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.